morning, Chem 20s. Today is going to be a very easy lesson. It's a review from Science 10. So let's get started on molar mass. So molar mass of a substance is the mass of one mole of the substance expressed in grams per mole. So when we look at molar mass, every substance has a different molar mass. Now, the problem with molar mass is when we go into the lab, there's no way to measure molar mass. When it comes to temperature, we measure in degrees Celsius using a thermometer. When we measure pressure, we of course use a barometer in atmospheres or millimeters of mercury or kilopascals. We can't measure molar mass. There's no device out there to do it. So we're going to be measuring masses and then converting to molar mass using today's formula. Well, the first thing we have to figure out then is how do I calculate molar mass? So in order to do this, I'm gonna show you the work we did in Science 10, and then I'm gonna also allow you to do the shortcut that we uh, can do now in chemistry. So first thing we have to do is same trick I have all the time is when I give you a substance in words, please right away change it into symbols. So water should be H2O. Therefore, if I take a look at the general formula, we have two hydrogens, we have one oxygen. Same work we did in Science 10. So I'm going to go into my data booklet. I'm going to look up the atomic mass number. So two hydrogens means I'm going to have two times 1.01. .01. So that's going to be 2.02. .02. Oxygen, I have one of them in water. So that's going to be one times 16 which is still going to be 16. And when I add together molar mass, my answer is going to be 18.02. Now, the important part here is molar mass's symbol is capital M. And the second part of this is the unit I want to remind you is grams per mole. Reminder, this is in your data booklet. If you look on your periodic table, we have a key for iron. And if you look up the mass number, it also tells you that the unit is grams per mole. Now, out of all the molar masses, this seems to be the only one that I have memorized, 18.02, because it's 1.01 .01 plus 1.01 .01 plus 16. Water is one of those easy ones that you could simply have memorized. Okay, again, why don't you go off and try sodium hydroxide? So, NaOH. Because remember, sodium is one positive, hydroxide is one negative, they've got a balance. So we have one sodium, we have one oxygen, and we have one hydrogen. So we're going to have one times 22.99 is 22.99. We have one times 16 is going to be 16. And we have one times 1.01. .01. So we're gonna add this up, 22.99 plus 16 plus 1.01 .01 plus 16. 1 .01, and the answer is going to be, 1.01, .01, and the answer is going to be 40 in our calculator. What I want us to remember though is that it's actually gonna be 40.00 grams per mole. Because if you think about it, this is adding and subtracting rules for significant digits. So least number of decimal places. Since every value in your data booklet has two decimal places, my molar mass answer will always have two decimal places. Okay, here are three more examples. Can you please try them? Then unpause the video to check your work. So to me, this is KMNO4. So we have one potassium at 39.10. We have one manganese at 54.94. And we have four oxygens at 16. Therefore, my molar mass number is going to be 158.04 grams per mole. 
The nice thing in Chem 20 is I don't have to see your work. You can do all this work on your calculator. So literally 39.10 plus 54.94 plus 4 times 16. Enter. Make sure you're getting the right answer. Glucose is, of course, one of your memorized molecular compounds. So this is C6H12O6. And so we have 6 times 12.01. And then we have 12 times 1.01. .01. And then we have 6 times 16. And again, if we add all this up, the molar mass for glucose is going to be 180.18 grams per mole. Iron 3 sulfide, again, that means we have a charge of 3 in iron. Sulfate is negative 2. So I'm going to need more sulfate. I'm going to need another iron. I'm going to need another sulfate. So we're going to write this as. Fe, and remember I needed two irons, bracket SO4, and I needed three sulfates. So this is going to be two times 55.85 for iron, three times, and for sulfur it's 32.07. And then three groups of SO4 would be 12 oxygens, each at 16. When we add all this up, it's going to be a really big number. 399.91 grams per mole. That's a very, very big number. Okay, hopefully you got those right. Now, what I would like us to try is the actual conversion between mass to moles and vice versa. So this is the formula you recognize. This is the only chemistry formula we did in science 10. Um, and so what I would like us to do is we're going to go back a page. I'm going to get my pointer out. So I want to remind us that N in chemistry stands for the amount of the substance. That's the chemical amount we measured in moles. M stands for mass, that's our value in grams. And lastly, we already know capital M stands for molar mass and we measure that in grams per mole. Please, please, please be very careful and make sure you differentiate between mass and molar mass. You'll notice that in when I do a capital letter, I make it very pointy, very strong, like a capital letter, should be. Um, so let's go off and try this again. This is be a memorized formula, but we already know this one from last year. So what I would like us to do is let's try this question. So how many moles of ammonium phosphate? And again, let's write out our compounds in symbols. So we are thinking about NH4. And we're going to need three of these PO4. Because remember, phosphate is negative 3, ammonia is positive 1, so I'm going to need three of these guys when we go to write this out. Now, let's make a list of variables. How many moles? We are trying to find N. Do you have, if you weighed out, a mass of 42.731 grams? Now, we already know the formula is going to be moles equals mass over molar mass. The only way I can use this formula is I have to calculate molar mass. Now, I can do this straight in my calculator. So in my calculator, I have, and this is why I write out the formula, three nitrogens. So that's going to be three times 14.01 plus. 12 hydrogens, 12 times 1.01 .01 plus 1 phosphorus, which is 30.97 plus 4 oxygens, 4 times 16. Your molar mass should be 149.12 grams per mole. 
unlike science 10, you do not get a mark for showing work for calculating this. You can do the whole thing in your calculator. So you get one mark for writing the memorized formula. You get another mark for substituting in your answers in the correct uh, units. So I'm going to substitute in 42.731 grams divided by 149.12 grams per mole. Again, if you watch, grams on top, grams on bottom will cancel. So my answer in moles is going to come out in moles, which makes sense. So take 42.731 divided by second function answer, because my molar mass is already sitting in the calculator. So 149.12. And I go back to the original question. Five significant digits. My answer has to be in five. So 0 0.28655. Five moles. So one mark for the formula, one mark for substitutions with units, one mark for answer with units in the correct number of significant digits. Perfect. Can you pause the video and try this last question for yourself, please? Then unpause to check your work. So this time it's sodium bromide. Positive, negative. So this one's easy. N A B. R. We want to find out how much in grams, so this is going to be mass. My moles, it tells me in the question, is 0 0.72. My molar mass, we're going to calculate. So we're going to add together sodium, which is 22.99, and we're going to add it to bromine, which is 79.90. And my molar mass is going to come out to be 102.89 grams per mole. Again, you have to write down the memorized formula. Moles equals mass over molar mass. So we are going to solve for mass, which means I'm going to move molar mass upstairs to the other side. So mass equals moles times molar mass. So you get one mark for the two formulas, original and moved around. We're going to sub in 0 0.72 moles times by 102.89 grams per mole. Moles are going to cancel. And so I'm just going to multiply the two numbers together. So times 102.89 times 0 0.72. And my answer, I go back, I get two significant digits. So my answer is going to be... 74 grams. Formula, substitution, answer with units in sig digs. The last thing I want to show you is, let's do one more. We'll just open up a page here. If this is my original formula, I want to prove to you why molar mass is in grams per mole. So if we take a look, let's pretend we're going to solve for molar mass. Since he's on the denominator, the first thing we have to do is move him to the other side. When I move him up, I'm going to move moles away. So when I solve for molar mass, my formula is molar mass equals mass over moles. Well, I want to prove to you that this unit for molar mass makes sense. The unit for mass is grams. The unit for chemical amount is moles. Grams per mole. This unit is not made up on molar mass. It's grams per mole because that is what the unit turns out to be when you move this formula around. I hope you found this very helpful. Good luck on today's work.